ladies and gentlemen, the jury has reached a verdict. In the case of mid versus high price trail bikes, we, the jury, find these bikes. All right, not so fast. Before I get into the verdict, I wanna say that I spent a week riding these bikes in the North Georgia mountains. I did six rides in six days and literally switched bikes every time I rode. So after that, I feel like I can give a pretty good opinion of how these bikes compare. I do wanna say that as I give the comparison of these bikes, I'm talking about how they come out of the box because that's where we're at in this project. I'm not gonna talk about switching components, switching wheels. I'm gonna talk about how these bikes compare as they come from the manufacturer. I also wanna say that I'm gonna talk about these bikes as they compare mid versus high price trail bike, not trance versus trance. I may do a little comparison of how these two trances compare, but most of this focus is gonna be on how a mid versus high price trail bike compares. The first thing that I wanna talk about is how the components compare. In braking, I literally noticed no difference between the SLX and the XT brakes. I like the adjustment on both. They're both the same as far as, as how they adjust. The modulation felt the same. The power felt the same. Now, after a very long period of time of testing, perhaps I might notice a difference, but for the week of testing that I did, I didn't notice any difference in the braking. Shifting, I've mentioned it before, the SLX just feels a little bit more muted, not as crisp as the XT. Other than that, the shifting felt the same. So when I'm pedaling, when I'm staying in one gear and just pedaling, I didn't notice any difference in the drivetrain. The dropper seat post on the 2018 mid-price Trance actually felt better. And this is a giant versus giant comparison. I just want to throw that out there that they've improved the lever. And I actually like the seat post, especially the lever, better on the mid-price Trance versus last year's Carbon Trance. I think the main difference between XT and SLX and even the higher end cockpit components, so the stem and the handlebar and the seat post, I think you're gonna notice a little bit of a weight difference between a mid versus high price trail bike. Now, I do wanna say that if we were talking about low versus high price trail bikes, then you're gonna start to notice more of a performance difference and the components. But just going up one level from SLX to XT, there's not that big of a difference. Uh, I think, again, the weight savings is probably gonna be the main difference. I don't know what the exact weight savings is with the cockpit and the drivetrain and the brakes. My guess it's gonna be about half a pound, but I think that's the main advantage. Again, not much of a performance advantage. On the suspension, the fork and the shock, I literally did not miss the extra tunability of the Fox factory versus the Fox uh, performance. And that was interesting to me. Uh, I literally felt like both suspension setups uh, were uh, equally good as far as performance. I didn't miss the Kashima coating. I felt that the performance series with the black anodized coating uh, is just as smooth as the Kashima coating. Now where I did notice a difference is the mid-setting uh, tune of the rear shock on the mid-price trail bike, uh, that's not necessarily the, uh, the difference in the factory versus performance. I think that's just the way it's tuned. It's a little bit softer. Uh, I'll probably mess around with the volume spacers like I mentioned in one of my videos. Uh, but as far as the performance, I think they're about the same. Now I'll go into the ride characteristics, starting off with the climbing. So the first day I headed out on the mid-price trail bike, it felt pretty heavy to me. Now that was my first day of riding. It was unusually hot. I had uh, knee pads and elbow pads on that were pretty hot. And I, I honestly got a little overheated. I just felt like I was hurting. It felt like the bike was a little bit sluggish on the climbs. Uh, but that actually improved as I continued on in my trip and, and riding more. When hitting bumps, and I'll talk about the rims on climbs and also on descending, but when hitting bumps on a climb, so you're, you're hitting roots and rocks as you're trying to claw your way over them, I actually felt like the aluminum wheels absorbed the bumps a little bit better. I felt like I had a little bit more traction uh, with the aluminum wheels uh, and I'll talk about how they felt on the descents here in a few minutes. Uh, that was a little bit of advantage towards the aluminum wheels. Now, with the carbon wheels, I felt like every pedal stroke had just a, a little bit more acceleration, a fraction more acceleration. The bike just felt a little bit more crisp 
on the climbs on the high-end trail bike with the carbon wheels. I feel like your power to the to the wheel is a little bit more noticeable on the higher end trail bike. So it just felt like the carbon trail bike with the carbon wheels accelerated, surged forward a little bit more with hard pedal strokes. And if you got out of the saddle and sprinted or really pushed it hard going up a section on a climb, that's where you notice the uh, extra responsiveness of the carbon wheels. Towards the middle of the week, I actually felt better climbing on the aluminum bike versus the beginning of the week for a few reasons. I mentioned that the Maxxis High Rollers had some pretty high rolling resistance compared to the Swalby Nobby Nicks. Uh, what I did was I just added a couple PSI to the tires and it actually helped uh, with the rolling resistance. Uh, also I added two clicks of rebound to the shock and that seemed like it helped the firmness of the shock. Uh, it didn't bob quite as much when I was pedaling and so that helped the climbing. Now I will say in some of the riding footage it looks like I'm bobbing. Uh, on the bike, so the, the, the suspension is really not bobbing that much when I'm riding, uh, when I'm climbing. Uh, what's happening is I am kind of rocking up and down as I climb, and the gimbal is kind of making adjustments as it records the video, so that's why it looks like the bike is bobbing up and down, but it's really not. The last two days, I actually timed myself on one climb. So I did it on the carbon trance first, and this is a climb that was pretty steep. It had some really steep pitches. Um, there was very little flat on this climb. And it took me 12 minutes and 28 seconds to get up this climb on the carbon trance. The next day I went out on the aluminum bike, the mid-price trail bike, and this is where it gets really interesting. I was expecting that bike to be 45 seconds to a minute slower on this climb. I just felt like I was dragging a little bit. When I stopped my stopwatch, I was literally one second slower on the aluminum bike. Now what I did on that climb was I did not uh, push extremely hard, not like a time trial pace. I kept the effort that I use when I'm out on a long trail ride, which is just a steady effort. It's not a super hard acceleration, but some of the pitches were so steep my heart rate was around 170 to 175 on those pitches. So just to maintain momentum you had to push pretty hard when it got really steep. So that was really interesting to me. I felt slower on the mid-price trail bike, but in actuality, I was about the same time. Now, if you were pushing really hard, standing up, sprinting out of corners, that's where I feel like the, the carbon wheels and the carbon frame is going to be a better time. Because like I said, it feels like the carbon wheels just surge forward more with a hard pedal stroke. So to sum up talking about climbing, I feel like the wheels make the biggest difference when climbing. I feel like the lighter weight, the less rotational weight of the, of the carbon wheels over a long ride is going to make the bike climb faster. Now let's talk about descending. And the first thing that I'll say is both of these bikes are a blast to ride on downhills. I mentioned the REMS and this is where it gets interesting to me is, you know, I haven't been on aluminum rims in a couple of years. I've been on carbon rims on my trail bike and my cross country bike for the past years. So it was kind of a revelation to me descending on aluminum wheels. There's some advantages and disadvantages over carbon. I honestly didn't think there would be any advantages of aluminum over, over carbon rims, but there are. The aluminum rims feel softer in a good way. So when you're plowing through chunky rocks and chunky roots, it feels like it's more of a thud than a pop with the aluminum wheels versus the carbon. So it actually feels like the bike has a little bit more travel and a little bit more comfortable over that stuff. Now where the carbon wheels really have an advantage is the fact that the bike feels more responsive on a downhill. So you feel like you can change your line quicker. Uh, it feels like you can pop off of stuff easier. Uh, it just feels more lively and more responsive and I actually like that feel. I do prefer the carbon wheels but I could easily live with the aluminum wheels. So the carbon wheels really reward the rider who likes to throw the bike around, likes to ride aggressively. It feels like the bike is lighter and more responsive with the carbon wheels. What also helps the bike feel like you can throw it around better on the descents is just the fact that it's lighter. So the higher end trail bike is three pounds lighter and you can feel that not only on the climbs but you can also feel it on the descents. It just feels like uh, you can maneuver the bike a little bit better because of it being lighter weight. 
I'll also mention that the aluminum wheels can actually be more forgiving. So if you're a little bit newer to the sport and you're still learning how to really manage a bike on the descents, uh, the aluminum wheels can actually absorb bumps a little bit instead of throwing you off a line by jarring you. Uh, so you do get a little bit more jarred on the carbon wheels, so it just takes a little bit more skill uh, to keep those wheels from not bouncing around. The higher end trail bike, because of the carbon wheels, also feels more precise when you're cornering. And the faster you're going, as in on a descent, the more the advantage the carbon wheels have in keeping the bike in line when you're cornering. Now I want to move into my conclusion, my verdict, so to speak, of how these bikes compare. The first thing that I want to say is that the mid-price trail bike category, I think, is the sweet spot for value. It's going to give you the best bang for your buck. And that category, I would classify kind of between $2,500 to $3,500. The nice thing about the mid-price trail bike category is I really feel like any level of rider is going to have fun on this bike. If you're newer to the sport and you're ne you've never ridden a high-end trail bike, you're honestly not going to miss out on a whole lot with a mid-price trail bike and you're really not going to know what you're missing by going with a mid versus a high price trail bike. The person that's going to benefit most from the higher end trail bike is someone who rides aggressively because the bike responds better to rider inputs. It's going to accelerate faster. It's even going to brake better because of the carbon wheels. And also, it's going to climb faster, especially when you're pushing hard. I've said this before, and it's worth mentioning again, that in your bike buying decision, you need to consider who you ride with. If you ride with people who are on cross-country bikes and you're on a heavy trail bike, it's not going to be a lot of fun trying to keep up with them on the climbs or even waiting for them on the descents. Now, if you're looking for a longer travel bike, like a trail bike, but you also want to be able to keep up with the cross-country crowd, then you're going to need to spend money on the higher end trail bike. The carbon frame, carbon wheels, the lighter bike is going to allow that bike to be able to keep up with people on a cross country bike because 27 pounds is getting down there to about where cross country bikes are. Cross country bikes are can be around 22 to 25 or 26 pounds. Also, if you want a bike that's very versatile, in other words, it can cover the smoother cross country trails and the rougher trails, the higher end trail bike is going to make the bike more versatile. A 30 pound bike is not going to ride as quick and nimble and accelerate as fast as the lighter higher end trail bike. If you're really just focused on descending and you don't care about taking a little extra effort or time to get up the hill, the mid-price trail bike is going to be fine. Yes, the carbon wheels are going to be more responsive on the descents, but like I said, there's an advantage to the aluminum wheels and they really don't feel that bad at all on the descents. The last thing that I want to mention is just the possibility of doing a wheel upgrade on the mid-price trail bike. That's where you're going to gain the biggest performance advantage. So if your budget only allows you to get a mid-price trail bike, don't worry about it. Get it, get on the bike, that gets you out on the trail riding a very good bike and then down the road a year or two later, save up money for a carbon set of wheels. That's going to really increase the performance of the bike. Some people have kind of asked, well, can you really feel a difference between aluminum and carbon? It's just a, a, a material difference. Does it really make that much of a difference? Yeah, it, it really does, and you have to experience it. It's kind of like if you have a Honda Accord and a really nice Honda Accord, the handling is going to be sharp. It's going to feel great. But then if you r drive a really high-end sports car, let's say a Ferrari, and the handling is just that much sharper and that, that much crisper, that's the best analogy that I can give of riding aluminum wheels and then going to a carbon set of wheels. So that will wrap up this video in my mid versus high price trail bike project. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the wheels, mainly putting the carbon wheels on the aluminum bike and I'm really going to say how much of a difference I feel it makes by upgrading to a set of carbon wheels. So as always, if you have any comments you'd like to leave, go ahead and drop them below. Thanks for watching.